Many different types of pumps exist to assist fluid movement in a variety of systems. An external gear pump uses two gears rotating against each other to provide fluid movement. One gear is driven by a motor connected to a shaft. This is called the drive gear because it is driven by a motor and it in turn meshes with and drives the movement of the second gear. As the gears rotate away from each other and come out of mesh, they create an expanding volume on the inlet side of the pump. This creates a vacuum at the inlet port, allowing fluid to flow into the pump. Then, fluid flows into the cavities and is trapped by the gear teeth. As the gears rotate, a flow path is created around the outside of each one. Fluid trapped in the slots between teeth is carried around and discharged into the cavity with the outlet port. Meshing of the teeth in the center of the pump seals the outlet port from the inlet port. No fluid passes between the gears. The advantages of external gear pumps are their high speed and pressure, relatively quiet operation, and that their design accommodates a wide variety of materials. Disadvantages include bushings in the liquid area can become worn and that they have fixed end clearances. Internal gear pumps are exceptionally versatile. This type of pump has one inner gear which is inside a second outer gear. The inner gear has a shaft driven by a motor and has teeth that protrude outward. The outer gear has teeth that protrude inward toward the center of the pump. As the inner gear rotates, it meshes with and moves the outer gear. Liquid is trapped in the gear spaces and carried from the inlet to the discharge. A stationary crescent-shaped divider separates the intake and discharge portions of the fluid. Advantages of internal gear pumps are a smooth and almost pulseless flow, and slightly more horsepower for its size. Disadvantages are its higher cost, limited size range, low to moderate pressure ratings, and few sources of manufacture. A rotary vane pump is a positive displacement pump that consists of vanes mounted to a rotor. The vanes are on an off-center drive shaft. As the shaft rotates, the variable length vanes slide in and out to maintain contact with the pump housing. The tension in the vanes is maintained by either springs or hydraulic pressure. As the vanes rotate, they create chambers of varying sizes within the pump. Fluid enters at the largest chamber. As the vanes rotate and retract, the chambers get smaller, forcing fluid to exit through the discharge port. The advantages of vane pumps are that they can handle low viscosity fluids at relatively higher pressures, can dry run for short periods, and develop a good vacuum. Their disadvantages include complexity and their unsuitability for both high pressure and high viscosity fluids. Piston pumps come in many different forms. A swash plate is a device used to translate the motion of a rotate shaft into the reciprocating motion of a piston. Swash plate piston pumps have a rotating shaft connected to a cylinder block containing pistons, which are pressed against a stationary swash plate that sits at an angle to the cylinder. As the shaft rotates, the pistons move against the swash plate, causing them to reciprocate within the piston block. The pistons create a vacuum that forces fluid in during half a revolution and expels fluid during the other half. On the intake stroke, a spring ensures the pistons pull back and maintain contact with the swash plate, causing fluid to fill the empty cavity left behind.
On the discharge stroke, the angle of the swash plate forces the pistons back inside the piston block and discharges the fluid. The greater the slant on the swash plate, the further the pump pistons move and the more fluid they transfer. Piston pumps, in general, are manufactured with closer internal fits than other pumps. This means that internal slippage can be less so that they operate with reasonable efficiency at pressures both too high or too low for the operation of other pumps. Radial pumps are designed so the pistons stroke in a direction at right angles to the shaft. The pistons are arranged like wheel spokes around a cylinder block with an eccentric central cam mounted on a drive shaft. As the shaft rotates, the cam moves towards the pistons, forcing them down into the cylinder block and discharging the fluid. As the cam moves away, springs help retract the piston and cause the intake stroke. Check valves ensure that fluid only enters the inlet ports and only exits the outlet ports. Radial piston pumps have a low noise level, very high loads at low speeds, and high efficiency. Hand pumps are used when a source of power is not available or where the extra expense of a power pump isn't warranted. For example, they are used on shop presses and other portable equipment, serve as standby pumps, and serve as sources of emergency power. Hand pumps are always of piston type and are usually constructed with a piston working between two check valves. Double-acting hand pumps are more efficient, allowing fluid to both enter and discharge on both strokes of the piston. Moving the pump handle in either direction allows fluid to be drawn in from the reservoir and discharged via the outlet ports. Check valves in all locations prevent fluid backflow.